if you are going to children's church this morning, I want you to come and sit up here with me. Amen. We've got a brown bag special this morning. Y'all haven't seen that here.
We forget about the circumstances that we've been walking through this past week. Father, we would have a clear heart and a clear mind that we would focus on what's inside. Father, we would focus on your presence. Father, we just ask you that you would just fill this place with your love, with your passion, and Father, with your courage to be that hero in this world. Father, we love you, we praise you. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Y'all make me this business class.
and of Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms and forced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty men in war, mighty in war, put four armies to fly. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even change and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and of goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all of these through... And all of these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. And so, let's stop right there. We started this series talking about the men and women of the Word and how God used them. And how Moses murdered a man, told God that he wasn't able to do what God was sending him to do, denying the power of God, to eventually go into Pharaoh and telling Pharaoh to let my people go, to lead those Israelites across the Red Sea, through the Red Sea, on dry ground. We see men like Peter who denied Christ after he had walked with Christ, after he had spent days and days learning the Word of God, which is Jesus, is that when he was approached, he said, aren't you that man that was with Jesus when he was captured? And he said, no, man. You think I'm the wrong person. Number one. Three times he denied Christ and Christ told him he will deny me three times before the rooster crows. To Saul, which became Paul, persecuting the church, going and dragging people from their homes, going into the churches and pulling people from the church, persecuting Christians, even was there when Stephen was stoned. To becoming Paul, which wrote the majority of the New Testament, Great, great verses to live life by. Leading many and many people to Jesus Christ through his personal testimony. Get that? His personal testimony. Through the life that he lived in the world, the change that had been made place in his life, to walking into the world saying, Yes, that was me. But I found a better one. Jesus. Amen. Now, I'll say all this and. and I hope you take note of this is these people were all in. You think about David, King David. Before he was a king, before he was a man of war, before he was a conqueror of tens of thousands of people. Because he was just a shepherd. He knew God. He knew the power of God. He had seen these lions and bears delivered into his hands with just merely a slingshot. This is the same David that denied King Saul's armor that said, I'm not worthy of that for I didn't earn it. This is the same David that stood before Goliath and slew him with one stone. This is the same David that had an affair with Bathsheba. This is the same David that sent Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, to the forefront, to the very front of the hottest battle that he would be murdered and become a murderer. This is the same David that we read in the New Testament that is a man after God's own heart. You open the book of Psalms and you start reading David's life. You start reading about where he came from and what he had done. And you read that David goes to the throne of God and he says, create me a clean heart. Restore me to a right spirit. Do these things in me that I can go into the world and I can show the people of the world what you've given me. Amen. Amen. All in. King David, he gave everything back to God. 
He said, I'm all in. I want to do this for you. I want to be a man that represents you in this world because when I'm a man that represents you in this world, is people don't see David. Amen. They don't see Danny. They don't see Austin. They don't see West. They don't see the man. They see the man that's in the candle, that's in the light. When James says, don't just be a hearer of the word. Because a hearer of the word is there's a lot of words that you hear in life. You hear the word murder. You don't go out and murder. You hear the word love. You hear the word compassion. You hear the word patience. You hear the word Christ. These are the things that Jesus has told us is to go into the world and to do. We read right off the bat is in Hebrews chapter 11 is, what more shall I say for time of filming to tell you about all of these heroes? This is what he's saying there. There's not enough time for me to go through every person's life and tell you how great that person was because of the power of God in their life because they become a doer. They went all in for Jesus. They went all in for God. They did everything they had. When Jesus, when he stood before the Pharisees, and the Pharisees, they tempted him with this, is what is the greatest commandment of them all? What is the greatest one in the entire world? If you was to give me a commandment that I could obey for the rest of my life, what would it be? Amen. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, for there's none greater than this. Everything that you've got, love God with. He even goes to the point, he says, put the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. And all these things will come to pass. All in. When you get all in with God, you say, okay, God, my, my, my life is yours. My wife is yours. My kids are yours. My money is yours. My job is yours. The vehicle I drive is yours. Everything that I have is yours. You're all in. But so often, we walk through life and we have a failure. It's going to happen. First John tells us that he who says he has no sin is a liar. And the truth, John 14, 6 says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And so therefore the truth is Jesus. And so therefore, he says, if you have Jesus and you have sin, you confess that sin that is in your life. What was I talking about a while ago? David, he went before the throne of God. He messed up royally. He had some failures in life. Peter, he had some failures in life. Samson, he had some failures in life. All of these different people that we read throughout Scripture, Saul, he had failures in life. But you know what? They didn't let the failures in life stop them. They went all in. They said, my life is yours. I've made some failures in life. I've made some mistakes in life. Created me a clean heart. Restore me to a right spirit. Then let me be a light in this world of people. They don't see me, but they see Jesus. The ultimate superhero, the ultimate one that gave his life for us. He said that he didn't just give his life for us because he is the son of God. He gave his life for us because he is our friend. He says, a friend, a true friend, lays down his life for his other friends. And he says, I lay my life down for you because, not because I'm your Lord, but because I'm your friend. Yes. Oh. The ultimate friendship, the ultimate hero, the ultimate man in our life that, that has so much compassion on us, even in our failures. It says, while we were living a life of sin, going in our own direction, is that he came and he found us where we was at, and he brought us back to the Father, and he introduced Daddy to the Father. Amen. You know, one of my most exciting stories in the Bible that I love to read is I, I'm, a, I'm a, David, a man that loves to read about David but it's the friendship that David and Jonathan had and Jonathan lost his life and before he lost his life David gave him a promise he said when he became king that Jonathan was going to be right there by his side and he's going to help him 
cool and he's going to be his friend and, and he's going to restore to him some of his father's stuff. Because Jonathan's father was King Saul. He said, I'm going to give you back your stuff. And you're going to, you, you know, we're, we're buddies. It's me and you. We're in it for the long haul. Best friends. And Jonathan died. David was heartbroken. But he remembered the promise that he made to Jonathan. And he sent his servants out. He said, I want you to go find somebody. That is in the lineage of Jonathan, a son, a grandson, something, some kin to Jonathan. And so it's men that go out and they search all the land and they come back to David. And get this, my dad always told me, do not come back empty handed, but he knew it's wrong, come back to something. And so he come, they come back to David and they said, Oh, we found a man, but he's crippled. He can't walk. He can't get around. And you know what David's response was? Where is he? And they said, well, we left him because we had, would have to carry him back to your throne. And you know, the perfect picture of this is Jesus and God. But Jesus didn't come back empty handed. David told his servant, he said, I want you to go get him. I want you to carry him back to my house. Back to my throne. And I want you to prepare for him the greatest feast this man has ever known. And he says, I want you to give him my servants. And I want you to give him my friend, Jonathan, his grandfather's fields. And I want you to give him my servants to go work them fields that would produce a fruit that he would say was his own. David's servants, they went and got him. They carried him back to the throne of David. They set him down in David's place at his table with a feast of feasts before him, and they said, This is yours. And then they told him, These servants, these guys, they're yours. Going through this man's head. In his mind, in his heart, what did I do to deserve this? And when David told him, get this, David told him, it is not what you've done to deserve it, but it is a promise that I have given. Now think of that for a second. Is the, the, the promise that was given to us is that if we would be doers of the word, not just hearers only, but doors would be open in our lives, paths would be open, and people's ears would be open. We would find favor with people and as we went and we showed them who the light of the world is and that is Jesus Christ. That is not Danny, that is not any other person, but it is Jesus Christ. And when we show him that ultimate person that saved their lives through dying on the cross, through surrendering all and as he was on the cross, he said, I finished. Christians in the world today, we might not face the swords are being placed in a fire pit, are being fed to lions. But in comparison, we go into a world, we go into a nation that is possibly as far away from God as it has ever been. We go into homes that has had less God in them, more entertainment than has ever been. There's a weakness in our lives. There's a weakness that we falter. If we would open our eyes, we would look up to the heavens. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. 
Seek my face. Then I, God, this is what he says, then I, God, would answer. Wow. So you're telling me if I, if I am a Christian, because he says his people who are called by his name, if I would seek his face, if I would, if I would look to the heavens, I would look to God, and I would look him face to face, then I would say, here I am, God. In my failures and my the things that I've done wrong, everything that I am, here I am. I have nothing else at all. Will you use me? Now last week I talked about thinking outside of the box. <clears throat> Not putting God in a small little box, not hanging on the shelves, but going into a world with God outside of the box and saying, okay, God, open my eyes to what I can do right now.
And I told him, I said, your sin, my sin, the people sin all around us is no difference. We're all sinners. And we all need Jesus. Because if my sin wasn't as bad as your sin, or your sin wasn't as bad as mine, then there would be a scoring system. And I can say I'm better than you, or you can say you're better than me. But there's not. For it is by grace that we are saved through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And therefore, the failures that we have in life shows us, first of all, that we are human. There's no excuse to continue sin because even Paul said, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he says, God forbid. But he says, You are a sinner. It is in you. You are flesh. But the good news is, through your weakness, through who you are in life, the man that comes out sometimes when circumstances present themselves, there is a Jesus that loves you continually. When you're told no, I don't want to believe in your Jesus. When you're told no, I'm not going to go to church with you. When you're told no in life that your faith is not real. There's a lot of Christians that throw in the flag. They say, I'm done. I'm never inviting another person to church again. I'm never giving a testimony to a person ever again because it didn't work one time. You take these men of the Bible that were stoned. You take these men that were strapped to the floor in prison. You take these men that walked into a fiery furnace because they would not bow down and worship a false god. And you see that these men, every instant, is when they come out of the circumstance they was in. People got saved. So I want you to, I want you to listen to this. I want you to bow your hands.
that you have Jesus. Reading your Bible does not mean you have Jesus. Putting money in an offering plate or in a box in the back does not mean you have Jesus. For he tells us that to receive Christ is that confession is made with the mouth and with the heart man believes unto righteousness. For it is the gift of God. You cannot earn it. It is given freely. You have to reach out and take it. And once you have taken this gift of God, it says that old man, that old woman in you has been put to death. And a new man, a new woman is resurrected in Jesus Christ. And the power of God has been breathed into your life that now I can say that I have faith in my God. I am saved because Jesus died on the cross for me. Not only did He die on the cross, but He ascended. He is at the right hand of the throne of God even at this moment make an intercessory prayer for you, for those who do not believe, and for those who have believed and have fallen back into this world. Now, you can hear this sermon and, and say, well, Brother Danny, I'm all in. I'm all in. Are you ready? To walk in the fiery furnace? Are you ready to be thrown in the lion's den? Are you ready to stand before people that say, I do not believe? And continue telling them, I love you. And Jesus loves you. Because in our failures, in our past failures, in our future failures, you're going to want to give up. You're going to want to throw in the towel. You're going to give up on church. You're going to want to give up on God. And I promise you, all that is, is Satan telling you, you don't have what it takes. You're not good enough. You're too far from God. You don't look enough like God.
community service with New Life Fellowship at the City Park at 11 o'clock next Sunday. That will be our services for Sunday. So our worship team will be doing all the worship at the park, and then um, Brad will be the one preaching at the park. And so we're sharing this service and showing our community that it's not just the four walls of the church where Jesus is, but He's everywhere. And that churches can come together and have fellowship. And if it rains, the church services will be held here at 11. So, one way or another, we are having church next Sunday. Okay? Amen. And then, on our Wednesday night, we invite you back to Wednesday night Bible study. The kids are going, the youth are going through to the Save a Life series. And we're going in the adult class. We're going through the Relations series. If you've missed the husbands, you've missed the wives, they're both on our, our website, um, journeyingtogether.us. Um, you missed two great lessons. This week we're going to be going through on Wednesday night through our children. And so we're going to be talking about our children. Don't miss out because we're going to be bad mouthing our children while they're in class. <laughs> so some of these kids are going to go to class and go, like, what are they saying about us? And so, but uh, we invite you to come back. We thank you for coming today. And if, uh, if, if you would, stay here with me. And if, if you see somebody here you've never seen before, go shake your hand and welcome to Journey Church. Thank you all for coming.